We are leaving Ponta Delgada in São Miguel, Azores, to sail about 65 miles south to Villa do Porto on the island of Santa Maria. Normally, we would wait for a downwind weather window, but in the summer here, winds are light. We're leaving in the evening for an overnight sail to take advantage of the calm seas and to test and calibrate our new autopilot, as it is required to sail upwind to do so. We head out of the harbor and into the dark seas in about five to seven knots of breeze, just enough to keep our performance cruising sailboat moving forward. How you doing, buddy? Hey everyone, we're Sailing Sweet Ruka. I'm Kate, this is Curtis, and Roxy the dog. And we're here to sail around the world via Cape Horn and the Cape of Good Hope. We like to take the sea less traveled and are ready for some serious offshore sailing. So come along for the ride and click subscribe. We checked into the island marina and gave a quick look around. But instead of a bird's eye view, how about a dog's eye view? Hi, Rock. Do you want to go for a walk? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, Roxy. Is that a good walk, buddy? Hey there! We are having fun in the engine compartment today. Doing a little bit of cleaning and degreasing. We just changed our diesel fuel filter. We actually have two of them, uh, and there's a switch that goes between the two so we can switch from one to the other while underway if we ever have any problems with our diesel fuel coming into our motor. 
and uh, it was time for its regularly scheduled maintenance. So we just popped another fuel filter on and uh, now we're just giving the engine compartment a little bit of a cleanup. Okay. The hardest part of working on boats sometimes is just how small they are inside. One little thing we like to do is write down the engine hours or the date on each filter that we put in. That way we can quickly open the engine compartment and see exactly when we put that filter in and how long it's been on that motor. It's really easy to forget over time when you did that last oil change or when you did that filter change, especially on a sailboat because we can go so many hours without running the engine. All right, might as well clean out our water strainer as well. Let's see what comes out. Here's our catch for the day. A little bit of seaweed. We wanna catch this stuff in the water strainer before it goes into all the cooling channels in the engine. But we've got a little bit of a problem. See that we've got uh, some holes starting to open up in our filter here. So we're gonna to have to find a little fix for this and see what we can do to uh, patch this up or repair it maybe with a little bit of screen. Our use of the plastic screen was a good temporary fix. While we waited for a good weather window to continue east towards the Canaries, we went beyond the marina and finally got that bird's eye view. Sometimes I can't believe that my own backyard is always changing in the most amazing ways. I don't know what's on your mind, but I know that it's something about you and me. I'll stay here for as long as I can, through the storms and through the calm. When you smile at me, I slowly begin to realize that you are the one. What are you doing? No, no, no. Leave it. Leave it. <laughs> the trail of Costa Sol along the southern edge of Santa Maria provided amazing views atop this southernmost island of the Azores. With its dry but temperate climate, it makes for perfect hiking weather. We were able to peek at Praia Formosa and its impressive steep rocky cliffs. Without you, I'm a lonely tree, cold, naked, lost in faith. And what's an island without a sea for you? Not only do we have an amazing backyard, but we also get to meet amazing new neighbors. Our new friend Mike invited us aboard to tell us about his beautiful yacht Pasha, which was a previous winner of the prestigious Sydney to Hobart race. Hi, my name's Mike. Uh, I'm the owner and the skipper of Pasha. Uh, I bought Pasha in Sydney in September 2018. She's a Camper Nicholson 55, built in 1968. Took her a sail, absolutely loved the way uh, the way she handles. She sails really, really well. Very beautiful, old school, but good school. They built 12 of these yachts back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. Uh, and Pasha was the only one that they built in alloy for racing. So she's got a little bit of a different design, a little bit, a bit more of a sloping, uh, sloping transom. 
timber deck throughout and uh, and mahogany refit down below. Yeah, so should we go down below and have a look? Yeah, let's take a look. This is what Pasha looks like down below. They've tried to, when they did the refit, try and keep it uh, true to the uh, racing tradition, so being all open. We have a couple of berths aft, three quarter berths there, and the settee is set up for, for two people. Lee cloths, there's another berth over there on the dinette, and forward is, uh, is all open at the moment, and we have a couple of pipe cots up there. On the bulkhead over here, there's some of the plaques from the races that she's done, she's competed in at least 10 Sydney to Hobarts and sailed across the Pacific, around Cape Horn, raced in Argentina, raced in Brazil, and has been through the Panama Canal. Now I've sailed her across the Indian Ocean, so we just got to do the Atlantic and then she will have been, uh, will have been around, the, uh, around the globe. So um, it's a nice shot and I'm very happy that, uh, that I'm the current owner and I like to keep her for as long as I can. If you'd like to learn more about Pasha and how to catch a ride, you can visit the website at the top of this video. Maybe someday Sweet Ruka and Pasha will meet again, perhaps out on the race course on the other side of the world. While Curtis was catching up on some stainless polish, Felicity invited me over to Pasha for a cooking lesson on a traditional South African curry. Who knew this is what I'd find myself doing while in the Azores of Portugal? Hello, hello. Hey everybody, Kate here aboard the sailing yacht Pasha with my new friend Felicity. We are in Santa Maria in the Azores. The particular curry that she's going to show us today is from South Africa, where she's from. So, Okay, yes, I'm very excited. Thank you very much. So the curry I'm doing today is Durban curry. We've got different curries in South Africa. Um, but this particular one is from Durban. It's the east coast on the Indian Ocean. Oh, and um, yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's start. All right, let's start. I'm excited and I'm hungry. <laughs> let's go. So I've peeled the potatoes. It's, I'm just putting it aside for now until I need it later. Um, what I'm going to do now is chop some onions and um, fry that in the pan with, with all the spices. Cinnamon stick, chili powder, paprika, oh, wow, that smells amazing. You can s smell the flavors mm. coming through now. I'm actually going to add a little bit more oil and then the meat is next. This morning I put the meat in yogurt. It just makes it a bit more tender. So I'm gonna dump it in here and fry it. Adding some water. Pepper? Pepper doesn't matter. Voila! All right, here we have our Durban curry, and I can't wait to taste it. I'm sure it's gonna be delicious. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. 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 Cheers
Okay, do you have to have some of this? Mmm. Mmm, that's really good. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I can't wait to try this myself, you guys. Mm. Recipe in the comments. All right, mm -hmm. bye. I'm gonna eat now. <laughs> A weather window was finally approaching to make our five-day sail to the Canaries, so we squeezed in some time learning a new skill. Thanks to Tom from Monk Surfing, I'm now in love with the ocean even more. We couldn't help feeling like kids on the playground of Santa Maria, so to finish off our time we had a little fun on a scooter before taking back off on the road of the open ocean towards the Canaries. Maybe I never knew what I really wanted But looking back I can see it's all clear I'm still a kid trying to act like they all taught me top and Pico Alto in Santa Maria and we have a 360 view here. It is gorgeous. The ocean never looked so beautiful and we get cows too. <laughs> the day started with us planning to get groceries but instead we decided to rent a scooter and explore the island which you only live once so so far it was worth it. <laughs> We are trying to get to Cape Horn, but it is still closed, so while we're waiting to see if they're going to open, we are headed to the Canary Islands, and we're going to enjoy some time there while we wait and see what happens. The Canaries are about a thousand miles that way, south, and it should take us about six days to get there. Let's go! Oh, we have to get in the boat first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned next week as we make it one step closer to our goal of Cape Horn. And don't forget to subscribe! If you're enjoying what you see from Sweet Ruka, you can check out more by becoming a patron 